Savior today. I don't know about you, but I thank God for covering me. 14 years on one job and saw people sitting next beside me getting laid on pastor, but God covered me. There are people in my same neighborhood getting homes foreclosed on, losing property, but God covered me. When I was in school, people dropping out of school because they didn't have the money to pay their student loans or to pay their school bill, but God covered me. chapter 2. Minister Wilson read that this morning and I want to go back there on today. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. He say, I got the word. You have it. Say, I got the word. Amen. We're reading from the New Living Translation. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Verse 6, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Verse 7, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and his kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Amen. As you take your seat, I want to speak today from a subject, living anew in Christ. Living anew in Christ. To make it in this world, we must be in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. To make it in this world, mm -hmm. we must be in Christ Jesus. Yeah. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? It means to be alive in Christ Jesus. Well, but not just alive in Christ Jesus, but anew. But anew. What does it mean to be living anew in Christ Jesus? Well, I'm so glad you asked because this is the subject and, and, and this is the, the major point and, and purpose of today's message is living anew in Christ Jesus. There's too many folks who have become members of the church. Too many people whose name are never on the roll uh -huh. as members of the church. Yeah. Yeah. But I guarantee if you look at Faith Missionary Bylaws and you look at Everlasting Life Christian Church Bylaws, there's a such thing of active and inactive members. <laughs> There are some folks who are members, but are inactive. Remember, I was a part of a professional organization, and I was president of this professional organization for many years, and what always got to me even before pastoring is that there were many people that were paid to become a member, but wouldn't take advantage of the membership. Yes, 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 come on. We would hold meetings. They won't show up for the meetings. Come on, yeah. We would have planning retreats. They won't show up for the planning retreats. We would go to conferences. They won't show up for the conferences. We would have continuing education sessions. They won't show up for the sessions. And I, I, I found myself answering and, and trying to answer this question and, and asking myself, why then pay the membership Come on. if you're not going to take advantage of everything that the organization has to offer you? Why sign my name up on the road yeah. when I really don't want to serve? Right. Because there are so many people that are Christians that are in Christ, amen, but they have not been renewed. Yeah. They're not anew. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm reminded of this man named Nicodemus that came to visit Jesus. Yeah. Came at night because he didn't want nobody to know. Yeah. Yeah. He had a role, he had a title, he knew some religious folks, and he said, you know what, there's something different about this 
Jesus. Let me go talk to him under the cover of darkness. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus began to talk to him about being reborn, a rebirth. Yes, yes. And Nicodemus couldn't understand the thing because he was carnal minded. He said, what are you talking about? I cannot go back in my mother's womb after I've already been born. Oh, but Jesus said, I'm not talking about that rebirth. I'm talking about being reborn of the Spirit of God. Being reborn of the Holy Ghost and fire. So now you're not just a religious person, but now I have relationship. See, I don't want to know. I don't want to know God just through my pastor. I don't want to know God just through my mother and my father. But I want to know him for myself. I want to be able to call him for myself. I want to be able to testify for myself.
So now let me go ahead and take your mind and let me renew it. Take your mind and let me renew it. You used to live in sin, just like who? Everybody else. The rest of the world. Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. I'm going to try to call him the prince of the air. Obeying him. Listen, the world wants you to think that you got multiple and different, different employers. Man, you can, hey, you know, people be looking for jobs. There's so many different employers out here, folks, you can go work for in the world. Carnally. But spiritually, you only got two choices. You can either be employed by God or be employed by Satan. And here's the thing what tripped me out, Pastor, is that when we were in the world, when we were dead, amen, dead in our sin, we didn't even know who our employer was. Right. Well, I didn't even fill out that application. What do you mean I work for Satan? What? I didn't even fill out, I don't remember if somebody made that application. If you're not doing what God instructs you to do and tells you to do, amen. You ain't employed by him. That's right. That's right. He is the spirit, Satan, the devil, at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Amen. He's at work. And here's the thing. Just because we now have submitted an application, working for Christ, don't mean that, that, that Satan stopped doing his work. That's right. Because he is still, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. He's still working. Yeah. And that's that's why you still find yourself fighting some battles yeah. that you're trying to figure out, why wow, God, I thought I conquered this. Yeah. I, I, I thought God, I, I got beyond this. I, I thought I graduated from this class and this course. Yeah. Or you find yourself seeing something new and different. I ain't never wrestled a struggle with this before. Because he is still the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Amen. That's right. Amen. All of us used to live that way. Amen. 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 We all used to live that way. Well, Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. What our sin, what our bodies and our minds told us to do, want us to do, we did it. Uh -huh. We did it. And I, I remember I would hear my wife minister at that time. She'd be like, and I used to enjoy it. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, that was some stuff I used to do in the world past. I used to enjoy it too. And we'd be quite honest. We used to enjoy that stuff. But what we realized is that that stuff that stuff will not get us into the eternal life and the eternal promises and allow for us to inherit and to experience everything that God wants us to enjoy. Amen. And then too, here's the truth about the matter is that when we talk, when we say we enjoy that stuff in the world, do you know that stuff is only temporary? Right, right. Like, you know, you had a good time for that moment, man, that was good. And then Lord knows there were times I wake up or a week or two later, I'd be thinking about, oh my goodness, God, am I okay, Lord, am I? Oh, Jesus, what happened? Like, all this stuff's already through your mind. Like, God is going, God is going to put, he's going to get me. Cause, I mean, I knew better. I mean, I, I just be myself, both my, I mean, my parents have been my leaders and my pastors all my life. And they've been, I mean, they passed it. I mean, I can say this about them, you know, they say that we ain't been saved all, they ain't been saved all their lives, right? And my mom's like, but they've been saved all my life. Since 81, that's all I knew my parents being saved. So I knew, I knew when I was doing wrong. And we've been have my parents, hey, hey, my mom would tell us in a heartbeat, you keep doing that, you can go to hell. Hey, mom, why you got to say it like that, man? Hey, I thought you loved me. I say it like that. It's like, we knew it, but she wanted to make sure we knew it. You keep living like that. So the, 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 the stuff that we enjoyed, it was only temporary pleasure, man. It's only temporary. And see, here, here's what, listen to what, what Paul says here. Verse 3 of Ephesians 2. 
All of us used to live that way, follow the pattern and desires and inclination of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger or wrath, just like everyone else. We were subject, or we deserved. Should have been. When we did those things that we enjoyed doing, and, and, and then as we thought later on about it, we was like, man, God, I'm just hoping as I drive on my way home that I don't get in a car accident. Right. Amen. Woo. We deserve the wrath of God. Amen. We deserve the full extent of his anger. That's right. But verse 4, you know, I, I had this professor who would, who would tell us if any of the school, he said, listen, it's called the gospel for a reason. It's the good news. Uh -huh. And I'm so glad to miss all the bad in this world. I missed uh, these first three chapters and some of us, some of y'all back there thinking about your past. But, woo, yes, Lord, I was something else. <laughs> now I see the looks on y'all faces with the way y'all smiling. I was something else. Woo. Lord. Yes. For, for those of you who may still be a something else, I'm going to share with you the gospel message today. Verse 4, but God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. My God, we deserve the wrath of God. But how do you know, it doesn't matter how angry God gets. His mercy will always outmeasure his anger. It doesn't matter how upset you might think he is with you. How many know that his love always goes beyond and it's so heavier than his anger? And that, for that, I'm so grateful for it. Yes, God. For 19, 25, 30, 50, 40, 60, 70 years, I, I heard, uh, you know, my wife was telling me, who was it, uh, was it uh, your grandmother, your grandfather, one of them gave their lives to Christ at like 70, your grandmother, like 70 years old. So glad, even after 70 years, living any way you want to live, but God is so rich in mercy. <laughs> And he loved us so much. Yeah. Mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Grace. Listen, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Yeah. Listen. Three characteristics of our God that were manifested as attributes in the life of Christ. All three of them we find here. Mercy. Love and grace. Now together, they outweigh wrath of God, the anger of God. But individually, they also outweigh the wrath and the anger of God. Mercy. Mercy. When we don't receive what we deserve. Mercy. You deserve the wrath. I deserve the wrath of God. I deserve to be forever separated from God. But then mercy shows up. And it says you shall live and not die. Okay. Every cancer, I'm not going to call you a victim, I'm going to call you a survivor. Every cancer survivor, under the sound of my voice, mercy showed up. Every sickness and disease and desires to take us out is only, is something that originated and started from the fall. And its desire is to kill us. But mercy said, not so. Not so. Grace is when we receive what we don't deserve. Yes. Amen. Amen. So not only does God stop the hand of death, not only does God make Satan and all of his demonic forces behave and line up, but then what he does is he raises us up off of our deathbed and he tells us to live and not die. 
and he says that you shall be. You will be my royal priesthood. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. You are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. But it takes a renewing of the mind. It takes a renewing of the mind. To know that even at the age of 11 or 12, when they diagnosed me with a rheumatic fever, heart murmur, doctors would say that, hey, he would have to be on this drug and that drug for the rest of his life. He won't be able to play this sport. He won't be able to do this. He won't be able to do that. Thank God for a praying mom and daddy. Even before I became saved, even before I was saved, I got something. I started learning about this God. I started hearing about this God. And I began to think that, you know what, you might diagnose me one, one way, but how do you know that I ain't got to believe the prognosis? You can throw all the statistics at me and tell me what I will and won't be, but the more I grew, oh man, and you know what, Satan messed up when I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. My goodness. Because then the word of God became alive on the inside of me. And I found myself trusting God that, you know what, God, I don't care what the doctor now. Listen, I thank God for the doctor. I'm taking, I take my medicine. Don't get me wrong. I'm just waiting and I'm believing and expecting that one day I go into that office, right? And I'm going to hit that doctor and say, all right, you can stop taking this medicine. We don't understand it. We don't know what happened. But we're going to come off that medicine. But until then, I'm still walking. Still got doctors looking at me and, and saying, even after 38 years, they say, you know, I, I don't understand. I, my cardiologist told me, she said, by, by the time I have patients that reach your age, I've been seeing uh, my, this cardiologist I saw for almost 30 years of my life. And she said, before folks reach your age, they have had a heart valve replaced. Amen. At least we have open heart surgery. Oh, and she said, I just, I don't know what's going on. I said, I know. All right. yeah. <laughs> Just learn how to pray. I, I learned how to trust. And, you, and I found out if I trust him, he will pour out. Wife married eight years, wife and I. Doctors told us she'd never be able to have a child. Mm. Oh God. But I had a dream. A little girl. Literally, yeah, she was in operation after operation after operation. One time, doctors had to open up on an operating table. Her mother was there, her father was, came up from South Carolina, doctor came out before we had this. And he said, listen, we're looking at her. You know, her, her organs, her fertility organs and everything, and we're gonna be honest with you. We don't ever see her being able to have children. But before we do a hysterectomy, take her and reproductive organs out, we need your permission. And I kind of looked at her parents, you know, trying to see if they'd give me an answer. And her mom kind of looked at me. I said, wow, we just been married a, a, a few years. Four years, I'm like, God, that uh, way. And God just said, trust me. Our God. Who you gonna believe? Jesus. Who you gonna believe? Yeah. At that very moment, I told her, I said, Doc, listen, y'all do what y'all gotta do, but y'all ain't taking that reproductive and reproductive yeah. organs out. Go ahead and do what you gotta do, clean up what you gotta clean up, go ahead and stitch it back up. <laughs> I'm, I'm trusting God. Oh, it can't be done. Yeah. Amen. Got evidence, don't we? Faith yeah. is yeah. the substance of things hopeful. Yeah. It is the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Listen, God is just saying today, you might not see, you might not have the evidence today. 
But just keep believing. Just keep trusting him. That's all we're doing right now, Pat. We just trust him. That's all you've been doing for 24, 27 years. It's just trusting him. You know, I've been with God for so long, I don't know what else to do. I mean, when we were children, my sibling, we used to play church. Listen, salvation is here today. Oh, yeah. 